Welcome back to yet another tutorial video where we're learning about MailMate. My name is Matt Petrowski. I'm a MailMate user and a big time enthusiast. In this video in our series, we're taking a look at composing messages. And this one is Markdown for the win. Now, the great thing about MailMate is it does not attempt to cater to the masses. It starts out, it's very plain, it's very underwhelming until you fully set up MailMate. Throughout the course of this series, you've watched any of the other videos, you know that once you've got it dialed in, you have an absolute power editor. Now let's take a look at composing messages. Now there's going to be some settings that you need to set within your preferences. So as I bring those up, I have the composer section already loaded. You can choose some of the settings as default. What happens when you press a uh, command R or if you're using key bindings, such as I do with the Gmail key bindings, just simply hitting the R key. When you reply, you can actually ha determine how you want to reply to that person, whether what email, what address you want to use, whether it's an alias or whether it's the default account. You can only include selected text. I like to have that option checked myself so that if you've highlighted a portion of a long email message and you want only the included selection, turning that on allows you to do that. Auto completion when you're typing in email addresses can come from your contacts, also from the recipient headers from within messages coming from a particular folder. So in this case, any sent message that I've sent to somebody, I can look at the recipient headers and determine what the auto completion is when I'm typing to people. Now the preview when we display is basically what do we see when we start to type a message. So the preview we display when generating HTML. So you can choose whether you, or not you want to see the HTML preview always, only when generating HTML or never. If on, you're on a large screen, I tend to like always. But if you're on a smaller laptop, I'll only do it when generating HTML. Now most of the time, I'm generating HTML because I tend to compose my messages using Markdown. And that's exactly what MailMate has been set up to use. Now when you're replying to HTML, you can embed the HTML and you can choose to always embed it, only embed it when needed, only embed it when you're forwarding, or never embed the HTML. That really depends on who you're communicating with and how you like to interact with your other people or your people. Embedding method, you can choose an inline CSS with pre-mailer or a scoped style, style sheet. Really beyond the uh, beyond the limits of this particular video of choosing that scoped style sheet. Going with inline is pretty much the best. Warn before discarding HTML, that's a great thing. Now the thing that we're most interested in here is rich text email, rich text HTML markup syntax. You can choose to use none or markdown. Markdown is the default and I say keep it there because markdown is a great way to create your HTML emails. Otherwise, if you don't use Markdown, which it is possible to accidentally use Markdown if you aren't familiar with it, it's going to be assumed to be plain text. Now here again, you get to choose your theme that's going to be applied, none, standard, simple, classic, or Apple Mail. These are all just different CSS style sheets, which again, if you look at the previous video in this series, I mentioned within the settings, you can actually create your own themes and Set those up using your own CSS styling that's applied for all of your outbound emails. That's a very big uh, advantage to being able to take full control. Now you can style this however you want when you start to compose. Style sheet, inlining or none. Again, recommended is inlining. And you get the option to generate HTML, if not for styling. Highlighting code. This is where we get into, if you look at the previous video in this series where we talk about settings, you'll have to install a couple different bundles. If you want to apply highlighting using an option, pigments will have to be installed. If you are using a math language such as LaTeX or something like that, I believe actually if we go to the bundles, let's see, pigments is the code styling for a syntax highlighter. If you're including tech, uh, code within your emails, but then it looks like text math. 
If you're doing any type of math with your math symbols, then basically install this and install that. And within your composer settings, you will be able to highlight code using pigments and math code with text math or whatever it said it was. So those are your composer options. Let's take a look at the composer itself. I'm going to hit the com uh, just basically C because it's a mapping for Gmail for those keyboards to be able to create an email. So I would be able to start to type an email address and it's going to use my contacts right there as it came up with a list of those which I will have blurred out but basically as I sit here one of my options was to have the preview or not have the preview I can have it always or only when I'm creating the HTML email now of course I can show all of the different fields that I want I can include my CC if I don't CC a whole lot I don't have to include it if I don't BCC I don't have to include it the great thing is, once you've turned those on, if I don't save this message and create it again, they won't be there, but they may, they should be there if it remembers that I've used them before. I believe that's the case. I don't know why they didn't persist, but many times the features in MailMate tend to persist. I have a send later deferred option where I can put in a date and I can save that. And as long as MailMate is open, it will work. I have tags, uses default headers. I've never even used that option. Ah, that's where we set it right there. Um, I can say I want the BCC and I want uses default headers. So now when I create a new message, it will have all of those options. If I want to take the send later off, there we go. I just found that. There is so much actually included in here. Let's take the BCC off and go super simple. Uses default, close that message, create and there is all of my settings. So that setting that we took a look at with the markdown, that is this preview right here, which is a split plane, pane, and is, which is really nice. So I can say, hello world, this is Matt. Now if I wanna preview what it would look like in HTML, in this case, it's basically just going to apply whatever theme was actually selected in the settings. So let's go back to those settings and let's look at the theme. Currently, the theme that's being applied for HTML version of this email is using the standard theme. If I go to simple, or if I go to, let's go to Apple Mail, I can take a look at that. It won't reapply in this new message. But if I create a new message, and then I start to type. So in my setting, whenever I start to create or generate HTML, and this doesn't have that stupid HTML thing with B and bold and italics or whatever. You have to know Markdown. I can start to type title one. And you can see that as I started to type it, it started to compose that HTML email. This is a list of items to work on. Um, and I can put in one and you can see that using Markdown, it's very easy to create a very nice uh, HTML email and it will apply the theme that uses the CSS according to the theme that I've selected. If I want some code in here, I can put, this is some code that you should know about. And there we go. I love, not like, love this editor. So this is a brilliant way to compose your email. And of course you have the ability to hide that preview or show it. And you can of course save the message as a draft. You can send the message, you can add an attachment, and you can use basically show a contacts panel that allow you to choose from all of your different contacts. But of course, just starting to type it in with the autofill option enabled will allow you to get the email to go where you want it to go. The final things you need to know about composing email is that just like Apple Mail or any of the other editors, this is super simple to control. You can switch it from Markdown to basically plain text. That'll take off my HTML version and what I would get. You can see even the preview shows me this is the plain text you're going to get. Otherwise, Markdown will do the conversion for you. You can see switching back to Markdown, it took a little while to convert the text. I can control what signature is uh, specifically on by applying that signature. I can change the placement uh, as opposed to what is set to default in my settings. 
When I want to add an image, all I have to do is drag that image in. It will inline the image. You can see right there that includes it using the CID right there, and it'll put the image in line right within my HTML email, making it very nice for whoever's going to receive this. It also includes it, of course, as an attachment. If I needed to get rid of that, I can remove it, or I can attach additional files. I can choose through a dialog this way, or I can drag them directly in, and all of your standard attachments are supported. And so composing an email within MailMate, beautiful. It is a dream and I love using it. It actually makes email fun. I just can't give this application enough praise.